Alright, what is up guys? It's been a while since I've uploaded, but um, just hasn't been a lot happening to start high school and stuff, so a lot of, uh, well my cart plans got put on hold for a while, but I am back and with a new project this time. This is part of the next project. Got a Predator 212 to reassemble. Um, it's uh, still governed. Still got the low oil sensor. Kind of, uh, kind of gross. It was sitting out in someone's backyard for a while. And um, let's see here. And then two more baskets full of parts. Or well, one basket. Excuse me. I can't get the camera angle right. And uh, a big old bucket seat. I think. I wonder if you can guess what it is yet. Well, to answer your question, this bad boy, this, it's a sprint cart. This was just gifted to me today as a late Christmas present from my friends. And, um, Merry Christmas to me indeed. So, it's kind of a basket case. But, I'm, not, I'm actually on a little bit of a time crunch with this one. Because, um, we're planning on having a farewell party for, um... For a uh, um, for a, a friend in our church, and he's moving out, and he he did a lot of stuff for us as a youth group um, with COVID and all. So we wanted to thank him. So I thought, what's something we can do that's COVID safe and really fun? A go kart race. So we're gonna race race the, this cart, um, which for now I'll call the Green Monster. Sorry if the camera angle is a little wacky, and uh, we lost the uh, we lost the tripod recently. Um, but, um, so yeah, I, I'm trying to get this going in within a week, and then it's racing time. Alright, so it looks like I have my work cut out for me. So, funny story, this, this cart and this engine actually came out of a rivalry between me and my friends. Um, this cart, uh, they actually had this cart before I started, before I got and started working on the hothead. Um, so... The, a while back, they actually brought it over, and I fixed a gas leak for them, and then we raced it around the neighborhood a little bit. Um, this green cart and the hothead. And I'll, I'll put a picture in here of uh, the two carts together. So this was a running engine. But then, when they realized how much slower their engine was, I suggested they take out the governor, and uh, they got kind of stuck. The governor is still in there. And um, looks like it's... Yeah, it's still partially, it's it's still kind of in there. And uh, it's been sitting open out in their backyard for a while. So it's kind of nasty. I think I can clean this up, though. I just mostly need to make sure the bearings and the gears are extraordinarily clean. Um, I'm going to take off that kind of janky muffler. It's kind of booger welded on there. I'm, I'm going to probably just going to cut that off. And uh, so, yeah, first step for me is going to be fixing up the engine. And so... Pardon if the camera angle in a bit here is going to be kind of weird. I'm using the three horsepower flywheel as a camera stand for now. Got the side cover all cleaned up. It was kind of nasty before, but after rinsing with some brake clean and put some oil in the bearing, it's working just fine again. All right, the flywheel is off, and that's so I can get to that little shaft right there. That's the shaft that the governor rides on right there. So I'm gonna punch that out with a punch and then uh, the governor is gonna be out. I'm probably going to leave the linkage in just because that's what I did on the Briggs and from my experience if you put it back together right it doesn't interfere with anything in the crankcase. So I'm going to try to leave that there that way I don't have to rig up a new uh, throttle system which it would be a headache to figure out in, a, in less than a week. So like I said I'm gonna punch that out, remove the governor gear and then uh, this thing will rip once I get put, put back together and right. I'm going to go through the carburetor too because last time when we raced it, um, it died and it almost didn't start. I thought, I thought my friend was going to have to push it back home. So, um, so yeah, next step is for me to get this punched out and um, then put the flywheel back on. Obviously, I put get that back on. That's going to be fun, but oh well. It's the price you pay for performance, I guess. And the governor is out. There it is. 
There's the shaft. There's the hole. I'm gonna, I gotta plug that hole now. I'm not quite sure whether I'm going to put the shaft back in or put a bolt in there. At this point, I'm thinking I might just hammer that shaft back in after I take off that wire clip. I'm not sure, but more likely I'll thread in a bolt from the outside. That way there's no chance of anything coming loose. And yes, I remembered to remove the washer behind the gear. Do not forget to do this on when you do it, because uh, you do not want that little washer banging around in here causing havoc. It will destroy your engine. I can almost guarantee that. Just, just, just don't forget, please. I don't want to see more dead engines. All right, the governor is all the way out, and as you can see there, I put a bolt through. I took off the flywheel, thread a bolt through, and um, and I put some put some Loctite on, tightened it down. So that should uh, that should help keep all the oil in the crankcase. And um, I also removed the low oil sensor. It's sitting right there. I just went ahead and cut the wire, unbolted it, fairly straightforward. And uh, now there's a whole lot more space in here. A whole lot. I, I do not like having excess things in the crankcase, so they are gone. So, I still need to put the tappets in and the camshaft. I just spent a while meticulously cleaning the camshaft gear. There was a bunch of crud stuck in there. This engine was uh, kind of nasty inside until I cleaned it out. Um, it still doesn't quite want to turn. I need to figure out how to get oil to that back bearing. These bearings pretend to seize up very quickly if they do not have oil in it. I learned that the hard way on the the hotheads engine when I replaced the connecting rod then. Um, for for example, the, uh, the side cover here. Sorry for the poor lighting, it's late at night. But um, the side cover here, this bearing was virtually frozen when I got it, but I put some oil in it and uh, it spins perfectly now. So, um, knock on wood, you know. Good thing there is wood. Um, so, I need to get some oil to that bearing too. And you put clean up and put in the camshaft, oil everything up. Um, uh, it's, I'm going to have to get a new side cover gasket. This one got shredded when my friends took it off. So, um, hopefully there's a local store in stock that has that, has that gasket. If not, I'm going to have to go crazy with silicone. And uh, I'm not thrilled about that idea, but, you know, you got to do what you got to do. So, uh, next up is to put in the cam. The cam and tappets are in. Um, I found out the push rods had, have also been out, so I had to put those back in. So to do that, I took off the valve cover, popped those back in, muscled them back underneath the rockers with my fingers. Um, there's probably there's probably a more proper way to do it, but that was the simplest way without having to mess with valve lash. So, quick and dirty. Um, it wasn't wasn't terribly comfortable, but I got it done. Push rods are in, cam is in. Don't worry, I put some oil on the lobes. Um, for all, for anyone out there who's probably gonna complain about, you know, which tap it goes for which port, um, because they tend to wear differently. I I can't really do anything about that. It, the these parts literally came in a basket. I can't tell which one is intake or exhaust. There's no, the, the markings are exactly the same on both ones. So this is just what I can do. Just toss them in and hope it works. This is a relatively low hour engine anyways though, so I'm not too worried about about it being thrown drastically off. Worst that happens, I have to adjust the valve lash a little bit. But um, so yeah, the cam is in and uh, oh, it's cold enough in here that I can actually start to see my breath. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to be able to get this to start tonight, probably for the better. I think it's like 10 o'clock right now or something, but um, but that's mostly because this side cover gasket. I do not have one because obviously I work on mostly Briggs engines around here. So um, this will probably have to be continued next week, but in the meantime, I can at least put the flywheel back on and put the valve cover back on, exhaust pipe, reassemble the carburetor, and then I'm probably going to call it a night. Um, after putting the engine mostly back together. The frame I'm going to have to leave for probably another day um, because uh, this is a lot of work, <laughs> not going to lie. So, uh, yeah, next step is to put the flywheel back on. Oh, yeah, important note, uh, a builder's note. If you are pulling the can out for whatever reason, make sure to line up these two dots when you put it back in. If you do not, your valves will be going out of time and your engine will probably not run, or if it does, it will run horribly. 
Alrighty, the flywheel is back on. I put, on, put that back on. Unfortunately, I do not have a way to um, to torque down the flywheel perfectly, so I just had to crank on it with the good old-fashioned impact. I can't... Uh, there's just no way for me to properly torque it down. There's no way to hold... More specifically, there's no way to hold the crankshaft in place so I can get a torque wrench on it. So, I just... Crank it down as hard as I can. Over torquing, over torquing this kind of thing is is better than under torquing. I do not want this thing flying apart. Um, so yeah, the cam is in. So I put the cover on just to keep keep junk out of the crankcase and also help pro provide some support for the crankshaft. It does turn freely now. Now that I got some oil in it, well, I haven't filled it yet. The gas, there's still no gasket there. It's still just finger tight. All right, so now that the cam and the push rods and tappets are in, we should be able to watch the valves actuate. Sorry if the camera's a little shaky. I'm doing this one-handed. Yep, there's the exhaust. And then there's intake. And there's compression. Oh, and it turns the engine. Okay, yeah, I think it's safe to say that the cam and everything is all installed correctly. So, uh, I'm probably going to put the valve cover on. Maybe, probably not the exhaust pipe. I think I'm going to call that a day. I don't, I do not even know what time it is, and it is cold out here. I am really tired, and to top it off, I have a headache. So, yeah, I think this will be it for today. Um, I'd say I've made pretty good progress for with no parts, really, just, just, what, just what my friends gave me. And um, it's coming together. It's come together. I was really worried when I saw how how taken apart this this was, but um, it's going together more or less without a hitch. All right, so yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Um, give me a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe. Um, this is probably the first of probably a three or four part series on getting this car back up and going. My eventual goal for this is to get this track worthy and take it to North Texas Carters to race at the track. It's an ambitious goal. It's going to be kind of a, kind of a big budget, but um, I've been dreaming about racing since I was literally, literally as long as I can remember. So um, this could be my, this could be my way in because um, this, this is a, a purpose built race cart. So it can actually get onto tracks and the hothead cannot. So the hothead is a wonderful yard cart. But this, this, I think this will be the way I can actually get started in racing. And I know we have someone in the neighborhood that races at North Texas Carters. So I still haven't met them, but, um, but yeah, that's my eventual goal. Um, and um, thanks for watching. I will see you next time.